Hi, this is Diana. You're watching the Sinvergüenza podcast. New episodes every two weeks. Hi, guys. I'm Fabiola. I'm Ashley. Diana. And, and we, we are, are the Sinvergüenza podcast. podcast. Woo. Woo. And today's topic is going to be red flags in relationships. Yeah, there's a lot of red flags. Yep. Um, We're going to dive in deep. Yeah. So... Have you guys ever been in a relationship with someone who, you know, you just met and they're like, I love you within just like met? three, four days. <laughs> three, four three, days? Four no. Days. <laughs> have, okay, you have. I mean, no. Seems like it. <laughs> no, but it does happen, you guys, where there's guys that are really like trying to rush the relationship. Yeah, that would be creepy. Yeah. But you know what that always makes me think about before we get into dive into the subject is you hear some stories of people like we've been married for 20 years and like how'd you guys meet oh i proposed to her after our, our second week of knowing each other what? and got married within four days and they're still together and happy so that's just i always just think about that but There's, are they happy yeah. well who knows we don't really know but they're <laughs> they're still together and, yeah i mean that's crazy yeah yeah i feel like there's a lot of stories like that especially well more common back in the day everyone was getting married super quick and young so hmm. i guess that also plays a part but no no one has told me i love you <laughs> within three or four me days either <laughs> okay what's been <laughs> what's been the the earliest someone or has told you i love you i just i'm i've been single what a year so i i'm not very and you've only had how many partners have you had since then since the no split? no it's your whole life like up until oh now. i don't know like four like serious boyfriend girlfriend yeah, probably like three or four. Okay. Three, three. Serious relationships, I had two. The first one was in high school. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the first one was Aww. in high school and it uh, dragged, not dragged on, but it went on until I was what, 20, 21? Okay. No, 20. And then I met the father of my kids um, when I was 21 and we just split uh, in March. So how many years was that that you guys were together? God, that was like 17 years. Oh, wow. 17 years, yeah. That's a long time. Yeah, it's a really long time. But um, but we're good now, you know. We, it was hard. It was a tough year. But probably the toughest year of my entire life. Fabi knows. Yeah. Uh, but, I've, yeah, I've come a long way. I'm happy. It's been great finding myself and my passions rediscovering passions that i had and I love that um your sense yeah, of humor great. my sense of humor yeah, yeah. she's hilarious <laughs> so yeah it's it's been awesome yeah so yeah 17 years yeah. wow and how about you ashley how many serious relationships have you had i'm sorry i have to think about it three okay mm -hmm. what was the last one the last one? Mm -hmm. Well, currently in one right now, but the l the one before that, mm -hmm. um, a year ago, a little over a year ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Any red flags that you guys saw when you were in these relationships that maybe you wish you could tell your younger self, like, that's a red flag. And maybe we just weren't aware or not in tune with, you know, what was going on. I mean, a lot mm -hmm. in my first relationship. A lot of gaslighting. Love bombing is what yeah. got me. But I was so young, I didn't know. Um, so that's definitely a red flag. But I didn't know. I was just so excited. Because I was like, ooh, he's spending money on me. Cha-ching. <laughs> I, I got one. <laughs> but then as, like, the relation, as the years passed, you know, you get older. And we were in the relationship for several years. It's like an argument would happen or we would fight, whatever. And we'll be like, oh, but I had this plan for us on when, on Thursday. Like, how how are you going to be mad at me? Like, I already planned it, and I paid for it already. Mm -hmm. So it's like I would be like, damn, I feel bad. I don't want to waste someone's money. And I'll be like, okay. And then we would ignore the topic or what we were arguing about and go and do that and forget. And then it would just it was pile up. Repetitive. Yeah, pile up. Or another thing was um, gifts, wh which is the love where the love bombing comes we would argue oh but i just went to like for example like sephora really casually out of nowhere <sighs> and i bought you all this stuff i wanted to drop it off later and i'll be like oh okay so excited like <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> and what then are we mad about <laughs> yeah right so that that became like 
a big, big, big pattern. And then towards the end, I started realizing it more. And I was like, I don't want anything. Like, that's weird. Like, give me my space. Like, if I'm upset, I'm upset. And because I started noticing that it was starting to pile up. And I was starting to hold a lot of resentment Mm -hmm. towards the end. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a big one, too. Like, you know, when you're with a partner and you don't address whatever issues are at hand Mm -hmm. and you kind of just move on, right? That's how you create resentment Mm -hmm. because either you don't know how to communicate or there's just distractions, don't want to to talk about it. Yeah. And some people don't like being emotional. Yeah. Yeah. So they rather just ignore it. That's hard, yeah, that was, being emotional. That was the father of my kids, right? Like, we could never have a conversation about anything. And if there was a conversation, it was me and the wall, pretty much. He would just kind of check out and listen and then say nothing. And then I'd just grow tired of fighting with myself. And then it wouldn't get anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's hard. And that was... Did you, was that all throughout the relationship? Yeah, that was throughout the entire 17 relationship. years. Yeah. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. But, you know, we had the kids and I didn't want to uproot the family. And they were all little. They were girls. They loved their dad. He's a great dad. Fabi's, Fabi was there for many years. Yeah. he Amazing If dad. there's one thing I could say about him is he is was very is a very good dad yeah uh very attentive always with the girls Mm -hmm. so that Um, kept me there for years up until they started getting a little too uh, uh, old enough to kind of um be aware of the situation of the issues that were going on and i didn't want to show bad examples of you know i didn't want them repeating the same Mm -hmm. uh patterns looking at the same sort of and not that he was like a bad guy but you know, I wanted more for the girls, so. Yeah, yeah and some yeah. people say, like, I'm staying in because it's, I want my kids to grow or in a two-parent household, mm-hmm. but sometimes that's the worst decision. Yeah. Yeah, it actually creates more harm for the children. Because it's see a chaotic the environment that they're growing oh, yeah. up in. Yeah. yeah, and then they normalize dysfunction, even though the parents are trying to do, because in their eyes, you know, they're I think Diana was like, this is what's best to stay in the relationship, but honestly, it's, it never is. It never works out to stay just for the kids. You're no. either going to stay because we love each other and we're going to work through our problems because any relationship's not easy, right? Mm-hmm. We're either going to work through our problems or I'm going to leave because it's not working out. But staying solely for the kids, it never works. Yeah. It patches things up for a while, but then before you know it, the same issues arise, something else. Yeah. And then you're back in the same square one. What about the guys that are, like, super toxic masculine, you know? Like, you can't go to the restroom by yourself. I have to <laughs> walk you to the restroom. Or, crazy. you know. You can't dance with my uncle at a family yep, party. <laughs> or, you know, I don't want you, you know, hugging my brother. Or, I don't want you, you know, talking to my uncle too close. Hmm. You know, that is is interesting i think when you encounter those type of males because i mean i think especially what i do in 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 my profession i think it makes me kind of see within like this is some kind of abandonment wound that we're dealing with here and that's why these insecurities are coming up and i think it's also them being super insecure also yeah but it's it's, also insecurity right right? but it comes from usually an abandonment wound right the fear of you're going to leave me you're you're too close to somebody like something's going to happen yeah you know our dynamic or 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 threatening right Mm -hmm. but the person has to be (laughs) self-aware of you know this is what i'm afraid of and you know, based on patterns and behavior, she's never left me. So why would this situation make her leave me? You know, but also these men are not, uh, they're not aware of what they're doing wrong. Like Absolutely. they're not aware. They have no idea what they're doing. No. Right. Like no. typically they it's have a, no idea. No, they're they're doing, right, right, right. They only see their way. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, so they're coming from a place of what makes them feel safe. So somewhat mm-hmm. of having control, controlling your partner, you know, I think that that's what makes them feel feel safe. But because they've been like this their whole life, this is the norm for them, Mm -hmm. right? So you have to come from a space of willing to talk about it. Like, hey, babe, you know, 
I don't feel comfortable when you put restrictions on me. I feel like I'm walking on eggshells. I feel like I can't be myself. And in order for us to thrive in this relationship, I have to be able to be myself. And that's talking to family members or dancing or singing or whatever it is that makes you be Just yourself. Just be yourself. Yeah. yeah I have to important. be in a, yes, I have to be in a space where I'm allowed to be authentically myself. I have never been with a with a heavily masculine man like ever. Have That's you? good. Have you? Um well when we Fabi brought up about like the dancing like family members and stuff, I remember with my most recent ex, um we were at his mom's house and um every I don't I'm a horrible dancer. I don't know how to dance <laughs> at all. I have two left feet. Um, I can't dance at, like, n- n- like, it's horrible, whatever. So we were at his mom's house, small little apartment. We're in the living room. It was the mom, her brother, which was his uncle. The grandma was there, the little brother and us. And everyone was, like, drinking a little bit, listening to music. And they started dancing. And his uncle asked me, the, he told me he would teach me to dance. And I remember the mom was like, yeah, he's a really good dancer. Have him teach you. And I was like, okay, my, literally we were probably like right here where this table is. Mm-hmm. Cause the living room was so small. The grandma's there. Like I said, the mom, everybody, I thought everything was cool until we got in the car. And he was like, that was so disrespectful. What? <laughs> and I was so confused. I was like, what was like, did I do something? And I, I wasn't aware that I did something. I was like, what was, he was like, you dancing with my uncle. Don't you ever do that again. Don't dance with anyone that isn't me. And I'm going to have to talk to my uncle about it too. <laughs> How, and many, I was, how old was he at the time? Or how old were you guys? This was, how old am it's I like right now? like a year ago, right? Yeah, he said a year oh, ago. So you're 20. Yeah. What? And I was so confused. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, is this, I was more in shock. Like, is this really coming out of his mouth? I mean, grandma was there. His mom was there. Like, what? Mm-hmm. what? And I think also I was more in shock too because in our culture, Everyone yeah. dances with everybody. Yeah, yeah, Especially, I think, our family. Yeah, Remember, everyone dances just, with everyone. Like, it's normal. Yeah, it's not a big deal. It's not. Yeah, yeah. yeah so <laughs> that was that. I was like, that's where I had, like, a big shock. I was like, this is insane. I feel like I'm dating someone that's, like, straight up from the rancho. <laughs> from the 1940s. Not that there's anything wrong with the no, rancho. No. But okay? there's probably <laughs> some, some out there that w- wouldn't even do that. Mm. You know, but it was, I was like, this is definitely some some toxic masculinity yeah for sure yeah no i mean those guys are i think i think they're deeply wounded and i think sometimes they have narcissistic traits or tendencies um and they're just wounded right um but because they have been this way of operating this way for such a long time and keeping themselves safe, they don't even realize how their behavior affects their partner. Mm -hmm. So anybody that's in a relationship where you have to make yourself small, you're going to be miserable. That's scary. You know? Having to dim your own light. Yeah. Mm, Right, uh, yes. That's... That's, I don't know. I don't That's know how I'd be able to navigate yeah. with someone like that. You know, when I've encountered situations like that, I usually will say something like, okay, what do I need to do to make you feel safe? Um, but I'm also in a place where I think five, six, seven, eight years ago, I don't think I would be able to have these tough uh conversations because I think I would sit there internalize like did I do something Mm. wrong like I would probably sit there and question myself did I do something wrong you know was uh you know talking to your uncle was that wrong or or, you know walking away with your brother yeah you you know like I shouldn't have done that even though probably it wasn't anything wrong yeah, but you is, just start to question. Is that yourself. some sort of like manipulation in a way too? I don't uh, see. No, that right? This is well. Unintended. This is where it's a little conflicted because I feel like when you're wounded, you don't even realize that you're doing those know. things. Mm-hmm. Is there some people that are calculated and absolutely know what they're doing? Yeah, absolutely, definitely. But are these like wounded? You know, toxic masculine. Are they wounded? Yeah. Do they know that they're doing it or how they're coming off or do they have the self-awareness? Not really. And a lot of times I've noticed a lot of these men come from, they have sort of like a mommy issues, right? Mm -hmm. Somewhere the mom was absent, somewhere the mom was maybe a little too aggressive or just not there, busy working a hundred jobs or whatever, right? Is this? Well, yeah, it's called like the mother wound, right? Personally, I've, in my own experiences, 
I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's it's all connected. Yeah. Most of the time, if you're coming across a man that's very masculine and controlling, he has a mom that was absent, whether it was emotionally, physically. Yeah, I definitely have seen that. Right, Bobby? Is that a good yeah, assumption? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely, I mean, most, you have to understand living in this culture, it's very ex- expensive. And um, families don't last or stay married the way they used to. So then the mom has to work a lot, you know? And the mom's busy working 12, 14, 15, 16. Not just the mom, it could be the dad as well, right? Mm-hmm. And then what happens? The parent comes home tired and necessarily does not want to engage. They're mm-hmm. overstimulated from work, you know, and they just want rest. And then, unfortunately, since we're children, it's not like we can make sense of what's happening, yeah. right? So then we feel neglected and then we don't know how to advocate for ourselves or, or uh, you know, ask for whatever it is our needs. I need time, right? Or I need attention and attention for a kid whether it's positive or negative, it's still attention, Mm -hmm. you know? And now they're grown up and they don't necessarily know how to ask for what they need. It's also like control. Like when you were that young person, you didn't have control over your environment. environment. And as you get older, you can control your relationship. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I think it's hard. Um, because no one person in the relationship has all the answers, right? That's why it's a partnership, a relationship. It takes two people for it to thrive. Yeah. And also, you know, the toxic masculine guy is coming from a place of, I can do everything. Sure, he can, but he's going to burn himself out. Yeah. You know, and what does burnout lead to? Unhappiness. And some girls, too, they like when a guy can do everything and demonstrates like that masculine energy but it's also it comes with something else i mean it, but it's also knowing which one is um n- n- when someone is putting that behavior out when a man is putting out that behavior knowing when it's toxic and when it's not yeah i'll give you guys an example that i had not too long ago i was um i was with my partner And we were at the sports bar and this beautiful like (laughs) girl comes and she's taking our order. I if I think she's pretty, I know I'm going to think my partner thinks she's pretty. So naturally, I turn around and I go straight to his eyes like to see. I'm not saying anything, though. And. (laughs) I'm kind of, I, at that moment, I think I feel a little threatened because I thought she was beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my partner, I think, you know, he kind of just like, it's like, whatever, looking at the menu, not trying to make eye contact. And then <laughs> I, I put my hand on his leg. So this is my way of like, maybe I need a little bit of reassurance right now. Oh. And he kind of ignored my hand, which kind of made me spiral in my mind. Ignore? Like don't don't think no I don't think he I think you were expecting he just didn't like I, I, yeah I think pat, it, but yeah, you didn't get that. but I didn't get that right away so I start to kind of unravel right as I'm sitting there by myself in my head oh my god she's pretty oh my god what if like he comes over here and comes and watches the game and like mm. gets her number right I'm literally unraveling and take a deep breath and then. I know it was seconds. It felt like hours to me while I'm unraveling. He gently places his hand on me and just starts rubbing my hand. And then I quickly tell myself, okay, stop it. You know, you are catastrophizing. You are making things up in your mind that aren't real. And you know what? You're not going to, you guys are enjoying your time. You're not going to ruin this moment over something that's not real. You know, he loves you. You love him. Stop it. I took a a deep breath. He never found out that I was unraveling. You were feeling all of that (laughs) and thinking all of that. None of it because I was not going to destroy, you know, our evening out based on an insecurity that I know that I have to work on. These are, this was my insecurity, not his. So what would be your advice? Cause I feel like a lot of girls would have unraveled like physically in that moment, they would have gone crazy and ruined the whole night, right? You have self-awareness cause you know exactly what's happening. 
what would you tell because I know that's happened to I'm sure we've all experienced something like that but most of the time because we don't know what's happening we literally like lose our shit yeah what would you say to someone I think what I would say is you have to recognize that this is like a threat it's threatening you you as a person is threatening uh, your relationship or you perceive it as a threat but it's not a threat you're allowed to have ins- insecurities you're mm-hmm. human right you're allowed to feel insecure beautiful girl you know uh oh you know and you also have to understand that we don't have control over anyone my partner can choose to come to this place mm-hmm. next right. time People alone do what they want to yeah. do yeah yeah but i have to trust that my relationship is solid mm-hmm. i have to trust that he does love me and because i do trust him I had to, I was in a space where I was able to relax Mm -hmm. and kind of bring myself down without him even finding out, without him even noticing. As soon as he put his hand and started to rub, uh, I'm sorry, started to rub uh, his hand on top of mine, I was like, no, I love this man. He loves me and, and we're good. We're good. She's beautiful. And I recognize that she's beautiful and that's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think that it's okay to recognize that you have an insecurity. It's okay. You're not a robot. You're allowed to have feelings. It's okay to feel threatened. I think where the misconception comes in, where I think we're, we want instant relief from the threat or Mm -hmm. we want reinsurance that second and we're not getting it and i think that that's when sometimes people flip out or cause a scene it's also people can't like what i've learned is in relationships people can't read her mind i thought that for a long time living in my own little candy land um but yeah people can't read your mind and if you need something you gotta verbalize it and say it and when things you know are not working for you like if you Patterns are so important, you guys. I can't express how important they Mm -hmm. are. If a fight breaks out every time you guys drink, guess what? There needs to be a boundary around drinking. If Mm -hmm. a a fight breaks out every time you guys watch a show, there needs to be a discussion. If a fight breaks out every time his mom calls, there needs to be a discussion about, okay, what's really going on? And stick to your boundaries, right? Don't just say you have a boundary and and then it happens and then he's like, oh, you forget all about it. Yeah, you definitely got to stick to your boundaries. That's super important. It goes back to the patterns, like what I was saying about when I would argue with one of my ex-partners and He'd be like, oh, but I got his tickets to this. I got his, and then towards the end, I started realizing the pattern, and I was like, no, this is not okay. This is not good, mm-hmm. because I was I allowed it for so long that I was getting so used to it. So I was like, oh, it is what it is. But once I really started analyzing the situation, it was no, not not good very important to pay attention to patterns because once you're in a pattern it's also very hard to get out out of of that yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah. i mean i think a lot of the patterns have to do with childhood right if your partner makes you feel the way you did when you were a child it's a toxic relationship unless it it was a good feeling when you were a child yeah yeah Yeah. like oh you remind me of it uh, this time, a childhood memory or this, yeah. that's that can also happen to it. It's not always going to be negative. Yeah. yeah, but if you're leaving with you second-guessing yourself or doubting yourself, or internalizing, like, whatever I do is not enough. I can never make this person happy. Why can't this person just love me for mm-hmm. me? Why can't this person accept me? I think that's when you have to reevaluate. Like, am I just repeating a pattern from childhood and this is why it's so normal? This is why I'm allowing this behavior or... Or even patterns from previous relationships. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, yeah. it could also be from platonic relationships. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's important. So... I mean, gaslighting is anything, anything that anyone tells you that's, you know, what you're feeling, you're not feeling, what you saw, you didn't, you're Mm -hmm. not seeing, what you heard, you didn't hear. That's gaslighting. You're not going to tell me what I'm feeling because you're not me, Mm -hmm. right? You're not going to tell me what I saw. I know what I saw. I saw X, Y, Z. Get out of here, right? You know what you're feeling. You know what you're feeling. Like, those are not going to lie. The feelings are not, feelings are not going to lie to you. Your emotions Mm -mm. are not going to lie to you. Yeah. Mm-mm. Or your body. If you feel tension, right, you're anxious. The situation is making you yeah. anxious if you uh, feel tension in your body. You know, for me, I usually tend to feel uh, tension in my arms or I squeeze my legs. I'll do something like this and I know that I'm anxious. I won't say anything, but I know that I'm anxious. Well, I'll bite my. Yeah, me like, too. <laughs> what is it? Like this. So do I. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. 
and like shake my legs but I kind of do that just in general but I guess it intensifies when I'm feeling something yeah so you know like I said it's okay to have insecurities we're human right um and it's okay to kind of have a conversation about it if you Mm -hmm. need to with your partner in my case i took full responsibility for my feelings so we didn't have a conversation about it i know that this was my my insecurity i'm the i know that i'm the one that felt threatened by the situation and i fixed it with myself Mm -hmm. because my value is not determined on whether my partner decides to leave me or or not i'm still valuable i still matter and i wasn't going to let a beautiful woman you know ruin my night there's beautiful women everywhere everywhere everywhere. oh that just reminded me of something and this is the same partner i was talking about (laughs) with the dancing (laughs) with the uncle we went out to eat with his mom and his little brother and we're all sitting down and um a couple walks in uh, a, a man and a woman and the mom goes look um he is like a little he's too handsome for her and i look and then my partner at the time goes he freaks out towards his mom and is like why are you saying that out loud and why are you putting those thoughts in ashley's head telling her to look at another man (laughs) and me and her both looked at each other and we were like what is going on right now and then the little brother had to go use the restroom and then he took him to go use the bathroom. And me and the mom were like, what just happened? <laughs> we were so confused. But His it was own just, mom was confused. Yeah. yeah. But she just, she was like, yeah, he's upset. So I'm just not going to say anything anymore and just shut up. And I was like, yeah, he is upset. Clearly he was upset because it was me staring. Yeah. So oh he felt threatened. Gosh. Right. And Did also you guys talk about felt- it after? Yeah. I was like. Yeah, we talked about it, but clearly it didn't go anywhere. He didn't say he like he didn't open up or anything. Like no, no, no. How about the what guys that? that don't apologize? Oh yeah, who's that? Oh, that's for that. Oh yeah, those are hard. those are hard. The guys that don't <laughs> apologize. <laughs> yeah, I never apologize. To this like victim mentality of like you did this or you did or that, I'm sorry, but or you hurt me or I'm sorry, but. If if the I'm sorry has a button, it is not an apology. Or my bad, you felt that way. Oh yeah, yeah. You sorry you felt that way. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, but or I did that because you made me do X Y Z. You know. Yeah. The no. victim mentality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're flipping it on you. Nobody's yep. that powerful. We don't have control. I can't make you act however you don't want to act. Like there's no way I don't have that much control. So. You don't have that much yeah, control people over your partner. Yeah, what they want to do at the end of the day. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Like, I've definitely learned that. You got to take yeah. it for what, what it is. What about the other type of ma- masculinity? Like, I love that I don't open doors. I don't open any door. I think that's great, though. I, I also, I like, if we're that. at concerts or... You know, my partner will not ever let anybody rub on me. Like, he will either stand behind me, put his hand here, and then... Whoever to create a barrier. Whoever is walking is rubbing up against him. Okay, not about me. Guard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, but that you don't pers- you don't see that as toxic. I don't because I don't think I've ever had that. I think I my dad wasn't like like that. I think it's also like I would it goes back to what I was saying earlier. There could be some masculine traits that other people for them it would be mm. toxic because it's the way. The man carries himself in the situation, body language, conversation, and multiple other things. There could be a man that's doing that and be like, you know, like, you better stay here. I don't want anyone close to you. But if someone's like, oh, I just don't want anyone bumping into, bump you, into you or like hurting you. I want to keep you safe. That's yeah. different. Yeah. And so I love yeah, to too. like. I love that when we walk, like he always walks on the side of the road. Um, oh yeah, I love that. He carries all the all the heavy stuff. I never carry anything like I love that. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that that is, even though there's such small gestures, right? If you think about it, it takes a second to be like, hey, move out of the way, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But I feel safe Mm -hmm. when he does those things. and, And I love that, you know? But I think 
toxic masculinity kind of goes both ways. I think a woman can also be in her toxic, right? And very controlling, a dictator, you know, and could rob the man as well of his manhood Mm -hmm. without, you know, knowing that that's what she's doing. But it's kind of the same thing. It's when two people come together, unfortunately, we come together with the wounded parts of us. Oh, yeah. And if you haven't worked on the wounded part of you, you're going to dim everybody's light. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And it's also when you meet this person, let's say you meet them when you're 30. Okay. So you were living your life without this person for 30 years they come into your life you're now both 30 it's like you were a whole person before you met them you're your own character you have your your own way that you do things and it's integrating two people into one unit that's not going to be easy that's going to be hard yeah yeah it is hard there's going to be lot. things this person does that you don't like but over time you know if you love that person you compromise you learn to love it or you don't and that's fine too but there's times where you're just not going to like it at all. Yeah. And but that's this is why communication is so important. Yeah. Right? There are some things that, you know, I didn't agree with and conversations that I needed to have. And, and the, at the bottom of the day, if the person does not want to change their behavior, it has nothing to do with you. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it really doesn't. It doesn't mean that they don't love you. Sometimes love is not enough. Okay, someone can feel like they can't breathe without someone or they're going to die without this person. But if they're unwilling to stop a behavior that is, you know, dangerous to the relationship or Mm -hmm. causes friction to the relationship, they're not going to change. It's not personal. It doesn't mean they don't love you. It's just they're not in a place to change. So you have a decision, right? Am I going to put up with it for the next 10 years? Am I going to live my life like this for the next five? Or am I going to go? And whatever you decide to do is okay because it's Your it's choice. what you decide to do. Mm-hmm. But you do have a choice. You're not stuck, yeah. even though it feels like we are. We always have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. But change is hard. Change, change is, is hard, hard for a lot of people. And especially if we're, we're coming from a wounded place. Mm-hmm. You know, they say that subconsciously we pick our partners because we're trying to repair a relationship with one of our parents. I but what if it. you're not trying to r- repair? I don't know. I don't know if I can agree with that. Right? Because I'm trying to think about my own situation. I don't. <laughs> Well, if you think of the love bombing for a second, because, you know, not to knock my brother, but my brother is, he gives you whatever you want, but you have to do what he says. (laughs) That's true. Definitely when I was younger, for sure. I mean, yeah. But also I remember growing up, my dad would get my brother and I whatever we wanted from the store, because when he was younger, he didn't have any toys or didn't have any clothes or shoes like he would say um so he got us whatever we had he's like said i could provide this for my kids and make them happy and give them the childhood i didn't have i'm gonna give it to them could that be i just connected the two so you said that your boyfriend would shower you with gifts and you'd completely forget about whatever yeah, fight that's mm-hmm. exactly what i'm talking about right yeah it, it, doesn't that kind of it that's totally kind of what in a sense yeah, yeah in a sense exactly but there was happening. situations where it wouldn't be like, oh, I got grounded or something happened. My dad said something I didn't like. We're having a, like, a good relation, good, like, a good day or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he will just do it to do it. But I think there was, I would say, and agree to that to an extent, there was some times where, um, you know, as we were always arguing, like, if I got a C or something, I would get in trouble. But sometimes he was, like, too intense with his approach um, and not really kind about it. And he would feel bad and, like, buy me something that I liked. <laughs> <laughs> that was his way of apologizing because no one told him sorry. Yeah, See, could exactly. that could she have, in turn, seen those gifts from her boyfriend as I'm sorry? Yeah, absolutely. yeah, oh yeah, and you yeah, fami- yeah, that was familiar to yeah. you. So you were like, yeah. oh, it can't yeah. be that bad because you know, it, for it sure. somehow it kind of clicked in your mm-hmm. mind. Like this is how yeah, my da- I wow, yeah, I, I realized that yeah. too, and I was like, yeah. We, we gravitate towards mm-hmm. what's familiar. Mm-hmm. And everybody's dysfunction, if you do have one, is different, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Even if you don't realize it in the moment. Because yeah. I didn't realize it in the moment until, you know, it got 
it was more often. I was like, hmm, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some of your red flags, Diana? With or the- that you, yeah, that you've experienced? Well, uh, with the father of my kids, I mean, he was he was constantly cheating on me. He was cheat, cheat after one after another. And I let it slide. Not let it slide, because we did go through... I went through the whole thing that everyone everyone typically goes through once you know they've been cheated on. Um, you internalize, thinking it's your fault. You caused it. What did I do wrong? What, how could have this happened? Um, how could have th- yeah? And um, uh, I think I even normalized it after a few years. Right? It became normal. Probably. Yeah. It happened so many times. And my know? excuse was always, you know, we have kids. We have to stick it out. I don't want to split the family. He loves me. And, of course, those that two-week period where, like, he's constantly kissing my yeah, ass. Love bombing. Love mm-hmm. bombing. And before you knew it, it was just, like, a cycle. And it just yeah. became normalized. And a I pattern. Mean, I was never okay with it. Um, I was always, you know, insecure about this and that, nagging and always bringing it up. And um, eventually I just kind of put myself on the back burner and put the kids um, as first priority. And he, like Fabula said, he was a great dad. So that kind of took priority too. And before you knew it, I just lost myself like completely. Just yeah. completely lost myself. Yeah. Another red flag that I think we should mention is when they start to devalue you as a person or your looks or your physical appearance. Mm-hmm. Like, that is so hurtful when it's your abuse. partner. It's yeah. so hurtful, and it's yeah. it's control, right? Because yeah. they want to make sh- they want to uh, break you down, so, yeah, so that you don't you know you don't feel good about yourself, and so you feel like shit. You can't and also because maybe they're feeling else. bad about themselves, yeah. so they're gonna put you mm-hmm. down. Yeah. yeah, I remember the first time I I've only had one person ever say to me, "You think you're perfect. You think that you know." you know everything you think that you don't do anything bad i was like you're not gonna tell me you know who i am i know who i am (laughs) okay get out of here with that but uh that for me i feel like everybody has you know trigger responses right and i feel like mine is always going to be fight like Mm -hmm. whether it's verbal and then flee i'm out you know um so i've never had a problem defending myself or stating my truth or saying, you know, hell no, I'm, I'm I don't want to do this or this is not. But other people may have, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. if anybody is putting you down, just remember you're amazing, you know. And usually that comes from an insecurity of trying to keep you small, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. So I overcame um, that the pattern. relationship. Yeah. Uh, it was years coming i was preparing myself i knew that once i hit a certain age and my kids were a certain age um i was going to depart the relationship um i knew that i couldn't live like this for the rest of my life it just was not conducive to myself i wasn't fair um i knew i had a lot to offer to myself to you know just my life so um as my birthday was approaching i was you know i started seeing a therapist that was kind of helping me through it a lot of back and forth one weekend he was kicked out next weekend he was back Um, but i knew ultimately that i had to get out of it Mm -hmm. Uh, my kids were noticing and witnessing a lot of things and that for me was the ultimate that was it you know as soon as my kids start noticing things um toxic things i knew i was gonna get out so yeah and then just one day he didn't come home he was at the strip club i went on instagram and he was all over the you know with the strippers and the friends and all that and i was like that's it i'm done and i that was it he was officially out he you know tried multiple times to come back home and i was like no that's it um you set your boundaries it's it yeah and i've always set the boundaries but then i just they just like you know i think over time when the pattern is keeps repeating and repeating in different situations you get tired you get over it yeah everyone has and once it's done once you reach that breaking point 
Ta ta, honey. Yeah. What would I always tell you? Oh, you you're gonna leave. You're gonna you leave when you're ready. Yeah. Like I wouldn't even happen. judge. I don't think I've ever yes. judged you for no. staying. I've seen that. But with my I friends. would always say, True. "You're gonna leave when you're ready. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You're gonna leave yeah. when you're ready." And she did. Yeah. And I was ready multiple times, like many times. But I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I guess I just wasn't as ready as I thought. But yeah. what really broke the cycle? The strippers? The kids. No, no the kids. She got out of the environment. The dynamic mm -hmm. change. Mm. She switched yeah. the environment. Yeah, because we tried to do the... I tried to mentally think, okay, we can stay together. I can pretend as though we're not together, but mm. we are together. Um, but no, I couldn't do yeah, it. Yeah, that I can't work. Not. No, I, no matter how much I tried, there was no way. So yes, leaving the environment was the only option. And that was him leaving the environment. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you're doing better. Yeah, yeah. Hey, girl. you're out of that situation. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah. It's great. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us on this episode. Feel free to comment, like, let us know what you, what topics you want us to talk about. You know, we're willing to bring everything to the table. Yes, thank you all, thank you. and stay tuned for stay the next tuned. episode. Woo. <laughs>